So number one, that first overarching thing is that perseverance and resourcefulness on your end is 100% required for your success. There is no guru out there who's going to save you. There is no pre-made, pre-done, done for you thing that's going to save you. There is no special niche out there that if you figure that one out, it's going to get easy. This takes a lot of work is the ultimate truth here. And I'm going to tell you step-by-step step what it takes, but you're going to have to be persistent. You're going to have to push through when things get really, really difficult. When you've been working on this for months and months on end, and it doesn't feel like anything is going on. That usually means you're on the verge of breaking through, but unfortunately that's when most people quit. So that's where perseverance comes in and then resourcefulness. You are undoubtedly going to get to a point in time where you're confused about how does this connect to that or how does this work with that and you're going to have to go to google or you're going to have to go to youtube and you're going to have to search for how to do that thing that's resourcefulness and i'm going to show you a bunch of my videos that will fill in all of these gaps but just no doubt you're going to get to a point where you're like oh, i don't know how to figure this out it's not in a paid course it's out there for free you just have to dig in and figure it out so really that's the core of this. Now you got to remember that all of the other inter internet marketers, all of the other individuals working in this world, some of them are working more aggressively. They're putting in more time and they're more strategic than you are. And all that means is that they have a bit of a head start on you. You can do this today is the perfect time to start this business. And the model you're learning is essentially the same model I've been using for over 10 years. That's generated millions of dollars online. And whether you're watching this in 2021, 2022 or beyond, the theory here is absolutely sound. So who am I real quick? In case you don't know who I am, my name is miles Beckler. Uh, I started online making money as an affiliate in 2003 three for the mathematicians amongst us. That's over 17 years ago. As of this recording in 2009, my wife and I co-founded a website in the meditation and spirituality space. That website we began with $95 and 40 cents invested domain name and hosting It's cheaper today, by the way. And we've built that to a multi-million dollar website. Okay. Then in 2016, I started teaching everything I know about this for free on YouTube. That's when the fake gurus would start to sell you how to, I just decided to give it away. And then recently, most recently in the last 10 and a half months, I started a brand new affiliate marketing website. I called it my case study site. And within 10 months, it went from zero to $3,000 per month. I have perfected this process. It's going to take you probably longer than it took me because again, I've been doing this for a while. Persistence and resourcefulness will get you there. The plan works as long as you work the plan long enough for it to work for you. So that covers the who I am currently. My wife and I have five separate websites that are profitable. That newest one making $3,000 per month is the lowest earner. Four of those sites are generating over $10,000 per month, which is why I don't sell this information because I don't need your money. I need you to become an economic engine for your community. I need you to create success for your family so you can unplug from this crumbling society that we're experiencing around us and you can become that thriving economic engine that can help the restaurants and the individuals and really be an economic boom in your neighborhood. I think that can save our country and our culture. So that's why I'm doing that. That's my why behind this. Okay. Affiliate marketing. Now, how does it work? What, what is affiliate marketing? Obviously you get a special link from a vendor. When someone clicks on your special link and they purchase, you receive a commission, but to think of it in that lens is short-sighted. You're missing the key point. Affiliate marketing works when you help other people get what they're searching for. I'm going to say it again, because that's so damn important. You earn income by helping people get what they're searching for. Okay. If there's a busy mom at home who now is working from home when she used to go to an office, her kids are now at home because she's now home study teaching them and she can't go and get food on her way home every night. She's learning to cook and she realizes she has shitty kitchen knives and she wants to learn how to get better knives and she needs better knives, but she doesn't know anything about kitchen knives. So she goes to Google and she searches for the best kitchen knives for whatever her situation is, whatever she thinks of in that moment, she searches a phrase. She finds a blog post that reviews the different ones. If she trusts the blog post, if she clicks on the blog post, if that title compels her to click and she trusts it, she's going to click through and buy because it goes to Amazon. She's already prime member. Anyway, she knows it'll be there in a couple of days. That's when affiliate marketing works is when we think about our audience members, we put our audience members needs first. 
So if you've tried affiliate marketing in before and you didn't make any money or you're trying it now and you're not making any money and you're, you're thinking, I'm not making any money, which I hear all the time. That just means you're not reaching enough people and you're not helping enough people. When you focus on the audience first, everything seems to fall into place from there. So their goals, their problems, their challenges, what they're going on in their life becomes your problem and your challenge. And we spend our time as affiliate marketers learning all of the bits and pieces under the world of kitchen knives, for example, but it could be anything, knitting, crocheting, lawn care, yard care, gardening, doesn't matter what it is. We take the time to learn and go through and research and review and put all together the most comprehensive, the best post on that topic. So when they find it, they can read about, wow, this makes sense. I trust them. I like this. Boom. I'm in, I'm out. It's easy. I'm back to my crying kids. I had 47 seconds to get this done before the kids come out and boom, I got it done. Okay. So that's what we're actually facilitating here. Um, when they find you, when they click on you, when they trust you, that's when you succeed as an affiliate marketer. So if you're not making enough money, it's one of those things. So that's number three. We are now into number four and we're starting to get into the nitty gritty. I'm going to cross these first ones off so I can keep organized. So we're talking about the niche at this point, choosing your niche, which I know for many people is the most difficult part. And we're going to look at uh, on the computer here in a sec ways to uh, shortcut this. But also I want you to remember first, before we get there, you're not married to your niche forever. You can build a site and sell it. There's a wonderful secondhand market for built websites for cash flow positive websites. Um, you can evolve niches. The, the first products and things my wife and I started selling on her website, we're doing something very different, uh, but we're still being of service to that same audience. And really, I think that the idea of what's my niche is short sighted. And I think when you're thinking about what is, who is my person, who is my audience member, who is this underserved audience out there that I can go create content for and, and help them save time and help them find what they're looking for. That's when you're going to get it right. Um, empathy is really important to really get in the shoes of that mom who's now working at home with her kids and so on and so forth. You probably understand what I mean. So how do you figure out what your niche is? Now, there's a lot of ways about this. I've got a whole niche, um, how to choose your niche series here on YouTube. But the best way I think is to go look at what pre-made pre-made affiliate sites are being sold. Let me say that another way because it's kind of a tongue twister. So there's companies out there that pre-make affiliate sites. They build them out. They give you the basics of a website and they'll sell it to you for a thousand, two thousand ish dollars in between that range. I've bought one of these before. You don't need to buy it. That's not what I'm saying to do. I'm saying go look at the niches that they are creating sites in because they've done the niche research for you. So let's jump on the computer for part one. How do you do that? So first place I want you to go is milesbeckler.com forward slash websites. Now, when this loads, this is where I bought my affiliate case study site. The orange button that says view sites, that's what you want to click on. And now you're gonna look below. They have already revenue generating websites, which means they've been building these for a while and they're cash flow positive baby products and hunting. Interesting. You can actually go view the websites right here on their website. Then they have Supreme sites. These are their, their higher end websites. Um, drawing coffee makers, running gear. Okay. Spotting scopes, generators, gardening. Interesting. And then they have standard sites, baseball gloves, airsoft guns, uh, monocular. So this goes on and on. And this is ever changing, right? They're, they're always making new ones. They're selling them and you can go through these. You know what I did? I literally went to this website in the back of an Uber when I was on my way to a speaking engagement. I was paid to go speak and teach Facebook advertising to a group of entrepreneurs. And I decided with my team, it was time for me to just choose a random niche that I kind of knew something about, but was definitely not an expert in and build it out. So I spent $1,200 and what I got for the $1,200 through them. And I'm an affiliate for them. And I'm, I'm probably an affiliate for everything you're going to hear a link to, but you don't need to buy anything. That's just a full disclosure for you. What I got was a logo, a basic theme, and about eight posts of content it cost me 1200 bucks. It's saved me a bunch of time. Mainly it saved me from thinking, what niche are we going to go into? I just scrolled through and I chose one. I chose one that I had an affinity for. Now I want you to think when you're choosing your niche and you're looking around for niche ideas, what do you have a bunch of in your house already that you could potentially review? What are the things that you've bought multiple of? Cause you're kind of addicted to buying more of those things. We all have them. Woodworkers are addicted to buying woodworking tools. For example, gardeners are addicted to buying weeding tools. Knitters are addicted to buying yarn, et cetera, et cetera. So what is that thing for you? Um, what could you explain someone how it works relatively easily? So as you're going through these lists of these pre-made affiliate websites, just be thinking about like, oh, I kind 
kind of know a little bit about that. Like, oh, okay, I could see researching and working on that. If you're just now starting gardening and you're going to go all in on gardening and you know for the next two, three years of your life you're going to be gardening, that's a really great area to focus. If you've committed to weight loss and that's where you're, those are the types of areas where you can focus. So the number one place where you can go learn about potentially profitable niches that you can go into is by looking at that website that I showed you, milesbeckler.com forward slash websites, but there's more of them. And with your resourcefulness, you can go find probably five to 10 different companies that build pre-made or are selling affiliate websites. And you can look through the different niches that they've gone and just choose something. You're not married to it. You can always sell it, pivot, adapt in the future. When it's something that's kind of in alignment with something you enjoy, something you're going to be working on anyways, it gets a lot easier to talk about over and over and over in time. Now I want to show you a quick video that goes through, um, it's the 55 niche example video. So if you're on YouTube, type in five, five niche ideas, comma, Miles Beckler. And what you're going to find is this video here, psychology's marketing secrets and 55 niche market ideas. Um, I go on a roll and I talk about how some niches are uh, more advantageous because they're more important to more people. Um, right now we're, we're kind of in a unique time in our world where people are spending less money on frilly things they don't necessarily need. And they're spending a lot more money on things that they actually need. And this goes into the psychology behind that. And I highly recommend it. So just searching in niche ideas, Miles Beckler will help you find it. If you need more on that topic, that's where you go to get more. Now we're going to move on because I think ultimately you just have to choose a niche and start moving forward. What you're doing here when you're building your first or your second affiliate website, and I only recommend you build one at a time until you have mastered this game is your skill building. There's a number of different learning curves that you're going to go through as a digital entrepreneur. You're going to learn digital marketing, writing skills, uh, project management skills. So while you're building this first site, you're learning these very, very, very valuable skills that can help you in ways in your life that you may not fully understand from where you are now. And always, as you're going through those, I want to remind you one more time about the importance of the audience. Who is that individual? Where are they at in their life? If you are a lefty and you know that the world has a lack of left-handed products and you just want to go in all in on your lefty people because that's what you live and you know their pains, you know their fears, you know their frustrations, and you can connect with that, it's a great way for you to leverage that empathy of understanding what they are going through, okay? I remember how difficult it was to build my first business online. I remember how annoying it was when everybody wanted to charge me $400 $97 or $997 or $2,000 for a course from a guru that was sold through a free webinar that was a sales pitch. I remember that, which is why I'm making this video the way I'm making it for you today. That's empathy in action. And you have to take that for your people. So, um, you're not married to it. You can pivot. Uh, I wrote down some ideas, dog toys. Do you have a dog, right? Dog toys, dog beds, dog kennels. These are perfect micro niche sites that you can start. Um, if you've got a dog, it makes sense. If you don't have a dog, it doesn't really make sense, right? Um, composting, vermicompost, uh, knitting, gardening, hunting, crochet, whatever it is, whatever you're into, there's a whole world around that of people searching for what's the best knitting tools. What's the best sewing machine? What's the best gardening tool? What's the best rake? What's the best pitchfork, et cetera, et cetera. And you can meet those people where they are. Once you have solidified your niche, you're going to have to take a leap of faith here and you're going to have to follow through on this. Once you've chosen what it is, then it's time to actually build out your site. This is one expense that we can't get around. This is the only required expense in the entire process. Okay. And it's $40 for the first year. When I started, it was 95 40, um, but you can get it for less expensive. So what you need to get is on a self hosted WordPress website. This is not wordpress.com. This is wordpress.com. Org. Self hosted means you're going to go lease server space. This is web hosting. You have to have web hosting and that's your home. That's your virtual real estate online where you actually build out your website. Now, when I started, I had to figure out how to install WordPress and I had to figure out how to do all of it today. The hosting companies will do that for you. And I've built out an incredible tutorial for you on my blog. So let's go check that out. Cause this is going to show you step-by-step -step how to do it. So just go to milesbeckler.com. And on the top navigation, there is an option that says, start your blog, click on that. And guess what it is? 
It's a tutorial that teaches you how to start your blog. And we go step by step. Literally, I'm showing you click here. This is what you'll see. Click get started. This is what you enter for your domain name. Click here. This is how you get your hosting set up. Uh, $39.92 is the cost for the first year. The second year is going to cost a little over $100. We get you a discount by going through my link. I am an affiliate, um, but you get a discount, a significant discount on your first year. Um, the discount's even bigger if you pay two years at once. So you can actually um, save more money if you pay two years at once. Uh, but really, I think being able to get started for under $40, and that's the only expense, puts affiliate marketing in the reaches of literally just about everyone. Now, I want to show you how comprehensive this is. So I teach you how to get this all set up. And then we actually get into WordPress. You change your permalinks. We're going to talk about this in the, in the future, um, how to get your search console set up, essentially, how to get uh, some of the free Google tools, the Google Analytics set up, all of that. I show you how to get it all going. And we'll come back to that here in a minute, because right now, You've chosen your niche and then you have to choose a domain name. Now, what is the domain name that you're going to choose? It's a wide variety. You come up with something you can get behind. Um, if you're in the, the world of chef's knives, it can, it can be bestchefsknives.com. Um, it could be Susan's cutlery. It could be uh, knives at home. It could be kitchen cut kitchen cutters, kitchen knife, whatever you want. It's kind of irrelevant. And what I mean by kind of irrelevant on the domain name, a lot of people get stuck here. Uh, Google didn't really mean much before Google. Yahoo didn't mean much before Yahoo. Uh, Pepsi meant nothing before Pepsi. Brands become what we create through them. Okay. So you can start a totally unique brand name and you will build it into what it can be through the content, through the effort that we're going to cover in the rest of the steps here. Make sure it's easy to understand. Make sure when you speak it out, it's easy to know how to spell it. It doesn't have anything confusing, right? No pterodactyls that start with a P in there. That wouldn't be very good. Uh, and make sure just write it out, just type it out and make sure it doesn't accidentally say something in the middle. I cover this in the, the how to buy, uh, how to get started on your own blog um, a little bit, but there, there's sometimes you, you, you write two words together and it looks like there's a word in the middle. That's not a nice proper word. Uh, you wouldn't want that reflection on your brand. So um, really this is another situation where you have to pull the trigger and get going forward. Domains alone are maybe 12 to 15 $15 per year. Uh, so if you ever change the domain in the future, it is possible to move it, but you really don't want to unless you absolutely have to. So now you have the domain name and now you have hosting and you've got one year. And this is where we're really getting into go time. Okay. Year two is going to cost about a hundred dollars. Year one is under $40. My wife and I, when we started her website in 2009. Um, I had run out of money. I couldn't afford rent. We had to literally move back in with my parents. I was about 30, newly married. Uh, my dad was retired at home. It was a very small house. I grew up working class poor. Um, and out of that, we were able to scrape together $95.40. And I think it was the best thing that happened to us being that broke because we didn't have the money to go chase shiny objects. We didn't have any money to buy a course, to listen to a webinar of somebody saying, here's the shortcut, the magic secret that makes it easy. There is no shortcut. There is no way to make it easy. These gurus will not save you. You can save yourself by doing the work. And we're going to go down all the bits and pieces here. But I think if you're like literally bootstrapping, you're flat broke, you're like, man, I got to make something work that can be the most powerful moment of your life. Honor that and roll up the sleeves and get it done. That's how we built our business. Millions of dollars have been made from that first website. Um, you can do it as well. So next up, now you have your actual site up. You have your hosting running, your WordPress is built, and then now you got to get a theme. Now I do recommend in that post, and I love some paid themes, but you don't have to invest in a paid theme, especially in the beginning. You can easily build out on some free themes for the first year. Your site can look good and you can move forward doing what matters, which is publishing content that's going to rank. So many people start to build a website and the first thing they do is I got to make it look pretty. No, you don't. No one's finding your website until you're getting dozens of people per day finding your website. The look of your website doesn't matter. Traffic matters in the early days. Getting picked up by the search engines matter in the early days. And if you're not doing those things, you're focusing on how it looks and you're not focusing on how it works, you're doing the wrong things. So what free themes do we use? Well, wordpress.org 
That's the content management system that we're using. And no, Squarespace doesn't count. Wix won't work. None of the other options work. It's only a self-hosted WordPress website. That is run by a nonprofit organization called Automatic. That's the name of the company. And Automatic has a, a division that they make some plugins. But what they do is they put out a really nice, really well-built, highly optimized theme every single year. And they have a team of volunteers who make sure they're updated for security patches, who make sure they're quick loading and just about every developer in the world can actually customize these for you in the future. So it's a great free foundation for you to build upon. So when you have a bunch of content and you're ready to invest a little bit of money in somebody customizing it to make it look like some other website, any developer in the world can do that. People in the Philippines and in India and in Bangladesh, some three to five to $7 an hour people can make your site look beautiful and all your contents already on the right framework in the right place. So how do you find these things? Let's go back to the computer. So now to get all of the value out of WordPress, we're going to go to wordpress.org first. And again, wordpress.org is the self-hosted side. Now up here on the top navigation, there's themes. Now this is a gigantic repository of their themes. Now what shows up first for me is the 2020, 2019, 2017. These are the themes you want to start with, okay? Now I'm gonna show you another way to find them in case they don't automatically pop up for you. You search wordpress.org, actually you search themes, excuse me, for automatic. Cause that's again, the name of the company. So when it loads, you find the 2021. Um, they're always named the year because they put out one per year. Uh, right here, by wordpress.org, click on that. These are the only ones I want you to consider at this point. This is old school. This is where WordPress was when I first got started. They're, they're pretty nice these days. I really like 2017 theme, and I actually like, I believe it's 2015. It might even be 2011. Uh, the 2011 theme, I actually really like. So I think the 2017 theme looks great. You can click on this from here. Um, you can see the different people's reviews of it. You can click preview. You can kind of see it in action. I like the big imagery, but big images can get you to slow down your site. Um, it's easy to read. It's easy to navigate. Now, to actually install this theme, you want to go in through your WordPress dashboard. And inside of my tutorial, my blog post that teaches you how to start a blog, I show you how to install a paid theme, but you just choose, you just go search from the themes. Inside your dashboard, you click themes and what theme do you want? You type in automatic, it will pull them up and you load it. Um, obviously they have a download button there. You can download it and you can upload it to your server as well. So there's two ways to get that done. It's the exact same as what I teach. Those are the free ones. If you're interested in the paid ones, um, then it's all explained in the blog post, but you don't need it. So the one other note I want to get into on WordPress, one of the ways that WordPress works is you can add different themes. So there's millions potentially of free themes available. I recommend you only stick with the ones from wordpress.org from the core team, because they're the only ones you can guarantee that developers are going to keep coming back. These random made themes that look good from random people could contain malware. They could contain spyware. They could contain, they could hack your website. They could leave security vulnerabilities inside of your website. So other people can sneak into your website. It is not a good idea to go find a random free, pretty theme and build your real business off of that because that theme could become the weak point that crumbles your skyscraper in the future. Let me tell you how I know. I've had my ha my sites hacked multiple times uh, and this is one of the biggest prevention points. And also in plugins, when you start to add plugins, you do not wanna add plugins. Plugins add functionality to your website. There's a few of them that are required, which I explain inside of that post, um, but you really want to hesitate to add plugins because they'll slow down your website, which is bad, and they can offer more security vulnerabilities in the future. So when you're getting started, we want you to get a very, very lightweight site. There's not much going on. There's no real plugins going on beyond the core ones I teach in that blog post. There's only one theme on the site that is a core WordPress theme, and then it's content. And we're going to talk about the content game here in a minute, but that is really the key to success is massive amounts of hyper-focused content on what your audience is looking for. Eventually you can add functionality later. Eventually you can customize the look later, but I implore you to get through these first steps as quickly as you can so you can get into what matters, which is the absolute content. Now, let's talk about the basic WordPress setup real quick because it's covered in my 
blog post. So once you get set up with your hosting and your theme is installed, now you need to go change your permalinks, which is the URL structure up top. We need to set it to post name. I walk you through that in the blog post. Then you need to get it connected with Google search console and Google analytics. Let's jump on the computer real quick. Search consoles, the most, both of them are important from day one. So, so don't, don't not do one because I say the most important is search console, but search console is where you'll see the early data that shows signs of life that shows things are happening to get there. You go to google.com forward slash webmasters. And this is Google search console. Now you need to set up an account and then you'll need to verify your website, which I show you how to do in the blog post. Okay. Inside of this blog post, I show you if we just do control F search console, you can see right here, connect your website to Google. I show you exactly how to go through and get it all set up step by step by step. Okay. So you're going to get this connected and you're going to get your website verified in Google. Then Google starts showing you data. The second thing you need to do is you need to get a site map on your site connected over to your search console. And what this does is every time you write a new post, your sitemap automatically updates, and then it automatically notifies Google. Hey, I've got a new post it's here and Google will come index it for you quickly. If the tutorials here, which are step-by-step -step, and I show you every step of it are not good enough. You can go to YouTube and you can type in miles Beckler search console. And you will see here in this video, how to guarantee Google is indexing your WordPress website. This is the video where I walk you through the same process that we put in blog tutorial. Okay. Uh, so there is your resourcefulness. I'm handing you the keys at this point, your website is set up. Your basic website is set up. Now it's really time to get into motion. The world. The online world, the webosphere, if you will, works on content. YouTube works on video content, right? Like if a YouTuber wants to grow, it requires content to grow. Uh, my wife and my websites, we, we reach millions of people every single month. And if we want, when we want to increase our traffic, we put out more content. When I want my YouTube to grow more quickly, which I really don't care about that much. Um, I put out more YouTube videos, right? So your job from this point on, we just did the foundation stuff, right? We dug the hole, we've, we've fenced it off. We poured our concrete. We have now poured our foundation. Your job from this point on is content, 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 which means you're going to be stepping into a few new uh, learning curves that you're going to have to deal with. So I'm breaking up the, the content creation into phases through blocks of 30. And there's a specific reason because you're going to be learning about the process. You're going to be learning about how to write good reviews. You're going to be learning about how to publish on WordPress. And when you do it enough times over, it becomes second nature. And then you can start to think about more complex things that I deal with every single day, but you don't necessarily need to think about these yet. Okay. It's the idea of, uh, the first day at the gym, you just want to go in and do some basic workouts, right? There's nothing crazy. There's no fancy routines going on. We just really want to get ourselves to the gym, do our 30 minutes and get out. And if we do that enough times, we can really start to get specific and isolate on the different muscle groups and the different circuits and whatever it is that we do in that scenario. So you're the newbie going to the gym here. And that's what we really need to work out before you can start writing. You need to figure out topics. What are you going to write about? And ultimately you always want to write about what your audience is searching for. Okay. This is the core idea of how affiliate marketing works coming into real action. And there's some really cool tools that will allow you to understand what people are searching for. And I'm going to show you some of these. Now, this is the one area. If I was to recommend one place to spend money moving forward, it would be on a proper professional level keyword research tool. Now I've taught free keyword research tools here on YouTube, two separate times. And both times I taught them because I have a hundred and something thousand subscribers, I send them a flood of traffic. They, they get overwhelmed with the amount of data they have to purchase because all these keyword tools are buying data from elsewhere and they became paid tools and they're not the best tools. So unfortunately there's really no free keyword tool. That's going to give you exact search volume data and exact difficulty data. And that's okay. You don't need it. But if you want to invest in one area of your business, that's going to give you a competitive advantage over everyone else in your space. This is the place. So let's go a little bit deeper in this. First, we're going to talk about the ways to find free, uh, free keyword phrases. Okay. And we're going to go to YouTube for this because I've got tutorials on this. I have many different videos that teach you how to do different parts of keyword research. So we're going to go to miles Beckler and we're going to just type in keyword 
research. And you can see it automatically populates because I'm, I'm fairly well known for keyword research. Now, the specific ones that I'm going to show you. Um, oh, let me do, uh, actually, let's do Miles Beckler, five free keyword research. And what's going on here is I remember the title of the videos that I published. So that's, we're, we're working off of this. This is the easiest way to find stuff. Anytime you have a question about your business, growing your business, go to, go to YouTube or Google, type in Miles Beckler, comma, whatever your question is. I've got 600 videos here. I've probably covered it, but it's this video here, the top five free keyword research tools to get more blog ideas, video ideas, and podcast topic ideas. This is the place to go. These five tools are free. They don't give you the exact data, but that's okay. You just need to get a topic that you know people are searching. They don't give you the exact data, but the fact that they show it as a result means that there is data behind it. And for your first 30 posts, you just need to flex the muscle. You just need to move forward. So if you're in the knife realm and you know a lot about Sentoku knives, you know a lot about pairing knives, and you know a lot about knife sets because you've been dealing with it, you're a chef, whatever it is, go all in on those things you know first, because it's gonna allow you to write more with less uh, research in the early days, and that's key. We wanna minimize the number of learning curves. How to do keyword research, how to write a good blog post, how to publish, those are all those are all different learning curves. So if you already have expertise on something, you can just write how to do knitting, how to garden, and you just know some of these things like the back of your hand, start there. Go find a keyword phrase that matches what you know, what you can teach easily, and just start publishing from there. If you are interested in purchasing a paid tool, watch this video here. This video is keywords that make money is what it says. It's keyword research for SEO. I show in very quick, actually, it's like 20 minutes, um, the pro level tool I use and how I get it to essentially give me really high search volume and really low difficulty phrases. Uh, so I know that all of my energy is going towards phrases that I have a higher likelihood of ranking for. So um, it, it, the tool does have a monthly fee. I think it's $49 per month, which for some people that puts it in the I can't do that yet range. And that's okay. I want, I want you to know that you can use the five tools I showed you in the one above, but if you're interested in spending a little bit extra money right there on the early days to make sure that every ounce of energy you put in your business is focused 100% on keywords that get searched over and over and that have relatively low competition. This is the competitive advantage. I do believe the reason my wife's website has reached over 40 million human beings is because as she's written her 1000 plus blog posts in 10 years, yes, she has over a thousand blog posts on her website. Um, each and every one was focused on a keyword phrase. And a lot of them had get 200 to 300 searches per month, but they have really low search difficulty. And that means we rank. So we've gobbled up a lot of traffic on phrases that not everyone's going for. A lot of people think best chef's knife is where they want to go. I prefer to focus in on the long tail phrases like um, best chef's knife for left-handed cooks. If that's actually searched, I know that's a much more specific situation. I know I can empathize with that person. I can connect with them better. And I know there's just going to be less big name blogs, big name brands going after such a small focused niche audience. See how all of these bits and pieces are working together. So at this point, you now are able to pull out your different topics. Okay. You have the resources that you need, whether you're going to be resourceful and use the free tools and blaze forward. That's what I did in the early days because I had no money to invest in a keyword tool for at least six months into the game. Or if you're just going to invest to save a bit of time and to really focus your energy, great. Either way, you come up with topics. Now, here's one of the biggest keys. One of the biggest tricks I can give to you is don't go create a list of 30 posts or 90 posts, or don't even make a list of 10 posts or five posts. Come up with one and do that one, take it to completion, get it live, and then work on the next one. And then do that post and take it to completion and then go back to your research tool and find that next topic. If you fill your brain with too many ideas early, you're going to overwhelm yourself. And overwhelm is absolutely one of the main killers. There's a second one, which is called the chasm of death that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. And it, it, it's where people end. Their careers do end in the chasm of death. But I think overwhelm is one of the biggest things that people get into. And they're like, okay, cool. I'm going to do all the key research. I'm going to plan out my next hundred posts. And they don't write anything. And they spend one week, two weeks, three weeks researching and not doing. 
And again, this game does not work if you're not publishing content. To grow this channel to 100,000 subscribers, I put out 500 plus videos in three years. That is an average of one video every two days for three years solid. It was arduous, but you know what? It worked because YouTube, the search engine picked it up because I covered so many different topics. Each video was focused on a different keyword phrase and on and on and on the plan worked. My newest affiliate marketing website that went from zero to 3,000, I think we're at $3,600 a month right now in 10 months in one week. So that path, the reason why that worked, we did 91 posts that were hyper targeted and we went back and improved some of the old ones, which is one of the steps we'll get to. 91 hyper targeted posts, all meticulously focused on keywords each and every time. If I wrote posts on phrases that people weren't searching for, nobody would have found me. But since we focused everyone on keyword phrases, that's how it worked. And we got one going, we got one into production, it came out, it got published, we went on to the next and the next and the next. And that's what you're trying to build as a system, as a machine to go from idea to keywords, to written content, to your reviews, published, repeat that process. How fast can you get to a hundred posts is kind of the question, which really we're getting to the next steps, which the next, the one next step you need to get into is actually getting set up as an Amazon affiliate. So for that, you're just going to go, uh, just type in on Google, um, Amazon affiliate program. Now, Amazon affiliate program is where I recommend everyone starts. And the reason I recommend you start there is mainly because everyone trusts Amazon. And I gotta, I gotta throw a caveat here. Uh, maybe Amazon doesn't work in your country. I don't know. Maybe Amazon associate program isn't open for you in your country. If that's true, you're going to need to be resourceful and find what you can recommend products through in your country. Um, in the main Western English speaking countries, Canada, US, UK, Australia, et cetera, uh, this is the place to go. You've got the join now for free link up here. You need to get this set up so you can go actually get Amazon affiliate links. Now, again, why am I recommending you start with Amazon? You don't have to stay on Amazon only forever. There's great network works like Avant Link, which is uh, great for the camping, the backpacking, the hiking, the outdoor space. Um, there's a bunch of great affiliate networks out there. And many companies run their own affiliate programs um, that you can just go look at their website, search for affiliate, find their program, sign up and start promoting their content. But the thing about Amazon is that over half of Americans are Amazon Prime members. And right now with our world going crazy and a lot of people locked down, people are buying more off of Amazon now than ever. You see your target market, the, the mom at home with the kids, she already trusts Amazon. Not only does she trust Amazon, she's already spent thousands of dollars with Amazon. In fact, Amazon's already got her credit card saved right there inside of her account and her address and everything. She might even have one click ordering turned on. She trusts Amazon so much. So she can go from searching for a knife set to finding your blog post, to trusting you if your content's good, to clicking through and buying within about a minute and a half, which is maybe the amount of time she has with three kids at home maybe she has that amount of time. Okay. So it's facilitate again, we're back to that empathy idea. It's again, making it so easy for her to, to buy her thing or him. If it's a stay home dad, whatever, like there's, there's a million and one customer avatars for a million and one different niches. I'm just sticking with this first one that I came up with, um, as we were moving forward here. So Really, I think this is the big key and the big value in going with Amazon. Now you have a 24 hour duration from when they click to when they purchase. If they purchase within 24 hours after making the click through your website, you get a commission. Most other affiliate programs are 30 days, 60 days or longer, which can help you potentially earn more but everybody buys on Amazon already and that is worth it. And what I've been seeing is that right now in the last month of data from my Amazon associates account, I've driven, I've initiated about 270 sales. Okay. So somebody clicked through my site and then they go to their shopping cart and they check out, but I've sold 1500 individual products. Now, when people go to Amazon and they're about to buy that thing that you're recommending, they usually have a couple of things they can add on whether it's dishwasher detergent, I see very random things uh, being added on to orders, which increases the order value. So for every uh, con in the world of Amazon, there there's a pro in the world of Amazon. And it's just so easy to get started with. We're minimizing the number of learning curves you have to deal with. And we're minimizing the amount of trust you have to build because once they're on Amazon, if they see it, they like it, the reviews look good. They believe you. They're like, this is the one for me. They're going to click. They're going to click. They're going to buy. They're going to be done with it uh, and you'll earn income. So that's really why Amazon works so well in this situation. So you set up Amazon and there's some learning process in there. How do you find the products? It's actually really easy. You just go type in the search bar when you're logged in and it'll bring up your affiliate links and you grab your affiliate links. Now, 
You don't want to download images from Amazon and upload them to your site. That's against the Amazon terms of service, but Amazon gives you affiliate links that have the images embedded. So if you use their embed links, which is the only way you should be doing this, um, that's how you get your, their links and their images on your site in a way that's 100% compliant with Amazon. Now you are ready to write your content. We've got all the structure built out at this point. Okay. Now, if you're enjoying this kind of deep dive fire hose, hyperactive content, let me know in the comments. I want to know if a, if you've even made it this far. Um, but if this, if I should do more of these, cause I can do this on SEO and all the other bits and pieces. Um, now you're ready to start writing your content. And again, what you've built at this point is an engine, if you will. So a blog and an affiliate account and all these bits and pieces that you've built that's the engine, but an engine needs fuel, right? And it needs a lot of fuel. And the fuel for your growth is content. It literally is a race to 100 posts. And then once you get to 100 posts, it's a race to 200 posts. There is never a point when you should be done putting out content. Um, it's a forever game that we're in. Now, you might decide to slow your content pace because you have a lot of great uh, traffic running. You're making, you're hitting your sales volume and your sales target. That's where I'm at with my affiliate case study site. We're scaling back from three posts per week to one post per week at this point. But Google expects your website to always be maintained. Part of this is going back through old content and making it better because you've learned more. You've become a better writer. You have more skills that you can bring to your old content. We'll talk about that. But another part of it is the world changes. There's new products. There's new things out there. And Google expects authoritative websites to consistently be updated, which is again, why I think it's so valuable to choose a niche that, that you, you have an affinity for uh, that you're interested in. If you've been playing chess all your life and you know, you're gonna be playing chess for the rest of your life. Good. That's great. That that's kind of what you need. If you just randomly chose a niche because you thought there was money in it. Oh gosh, you're, you're in for a day of reckoning three years down the line. Cause you're just going to get bored three years. <laughs> Your day of reckoning might be four months out actually, um, because you're just going to get bored with it. So keep that in mind again, as you're moving forward, but writing the content, how do you write content? quickly that's going to work for Google. Because when you write your content and publish your content, there's a few different goals that you have. Number one goal is for Google to find your content and for Google to rank your content. So when they go search uh, best left-handed chef's knife, uh, if you have a post on that for your content to be written and structured correctly in a way that they actually find you on the first page of Google, then you got to have a really good title and a really good description. So when they're looking at that first page of Google, there's a bunch of options for them to choose. Why are they going to choose yours? Because your, your title is a promise because your title induces curiosity because your title promises to deliver more value than the other options above you. Now this is search intent. And I'm, I've got a video that I'm going to reference here in a second for you to go through, uh, but you need to understand this conceptually. So there's the title and the description are super important for this video. The title that you see here, I spent like an hour and a half writing title idea after title idea. I think about 29 or 30 different title ideas before I really, really felt confident that this was the right title for the video. And I do that with my blog posts a lot. So the title and the description are super important then the content needs to be structured in a way that Google likes, but the content also needs to be great for the reader because that mom who has literally 48 seconds to go research her new knife set, when she clicks on your website, if she can tell that it's half-assed, that it's terrible, that it was written by someone in the Philippines who has, uh, or, or any country, I don't want I'm not picking on any country. I have teammates in the Philippines. I, I love my Filipino teammates. Um, but if they can tell it was written by uh, English as a second language content person, because they were cheap, um, they're going to click back just like you would, right? You would never open up a, a blog post that has terrible grammar, that has terrible punctuation, and that's just trying to sell sleazy, push, push, push affiliate links at you. You click back immediately. So expect your users to do the same thing. Yet again, we're back to the empathy, right? Who they are. So it really needs to be a very good post and needs to be structured in a way that meets her. You know, what if she's a wealthy mom? Uh, and what if she, what if her, she makes $450,000 per year and she wants the best, like the absolute best. You might not be in the market for that. And that's understandable. But what if she's the mom who needs the cheapest, but yet she doesn't want cheap flimsy. She wants cheap quality. She wants like the prosumer level. Okay. Now these are the different um, avatars within your audience that you're always going to be catering to. And how do you actually really uh, connect with them? Well, let's go back to YouTube here. 
Now in the search bar of YouTube, uh, so you've got Miles Beckler and then type in, look at all these things that are already popping up. That's kind of crazy. Um, so from here, you want to type in how to write review post fast. Again, my name, how to write review post fast review post fast, excuse me. Um, and this is the one for you right here. I'm giving you my template in this video, how to write SEO optimized affiliate review post fast. Uh, what it does is it teaches you a process to get Google to show you all of the things you need to have inside of your posts. So if it's uh, the best over hundred, the best under 50, whatever those things are, Google will show you. Uh, you're able to go through this process. You make an outline, then you just fill in the gaps in the outline. You add in your affiliate links and you're off to the races. Now, the beginning of your writing process, that video that we just linked to is going to show you the exact process that you need. This is the thing you're going to do over and over and over. This is the work, right? Uh, successful digital marketers, successful digital entrepreneurs that I know work way harder on their businesses than they ever did at desk jobs. Um, I've been doing this. I've been full-time online since 2010. So I'm 10 years full-time online. I still often work 60, 70, 80 hours per week. Um, that's because this is my business. If this thing goes under, my lifestyle changes drastically. Um, so I'm bringing, and this is to me, uh, incredible competition, right? This is as much competition in the game of digital marketing, affiliate marketing, making money online as there is in professional sports. And there's no professional athlete who stops going to the gym. There's no professional athlete who thinks uh, winning the Super Bowl and then they can be a passive football player. It just doesn't happen and it's not in this world. So this is the work you're going to do over and over. And we're breaking it up now. The first chunk is your first 30 posts. And I want you to get your first 30 posts done before you even come up for breath. You haven't even looked at a logo yet. You haven't even looked at a designing your site yet. Nothing, because it doesn't matter because no one's going to find you if you have three posts, zero posts, five posts, 15 posts, no one's going to find you. You have to have the sitemap set up connected, which we did in an earlier step. And then it's just brute force content. So one of the big questions becomes, let me grab a drink of water. So one of the big questions becomes, how quickly can you put out high quality content that your audience is going to open, read and think, wow, this is great. This is super helpful. Gosh, thanks for writing this. This really actually helped me find the right knife set for me. Uh, is it one a day? Great. If you're in a position to do one a day, perfect. Is it two per week, three per week, four per week? All I know is the more posts that are great, right? Well-researched SEO optimized and really, really great bet there. They really are the best kind of review on the topic on that matter. Um, the more of those you can put out, the, the faster you are uh, catching up to your competitors who simply have a head start on you. And if you want to overtake them, which is obviously the goal of this whole thing, you just need to outwork them for a longer period of time. So if they've got 78 posts and you have zero and they're putting out two posts per week. You could put out four posts per week and within 30, for 39 weeks, you will have caught up to them. That's rough math. Correct me or, or forgive me if I'm wrong or correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but that's the theory here. So you want to get the frequency of publishing up as high as you can without compromising the quality of what you're publishing. Okay. And there's two types of posts that you're going to be creating. Number one is that review post that I just showed you. Okay. That is going to be 80% of what you do 80 to 90%. So in doing 30 of these posts, um, about 27, maybe 24 to 27 are going to be direct review best chef's knife for left-handed person, best pairing knife for apples, whatever those those phrases that you find from the keyword tools are one after the other, after the other, line them up, knock them down, move forward on to the next. Remember you're building skills. You're learning how to do keyword research. You're learning how to do product research. You're learning how to write effectively as a communicator. You're learning how to publish on WordPress. You're learning the basics of search engine optimization. It gets easier over time. If it takes you three hours to write your first post, if it takes you 10 hours, if it takes you three days to write your first post, that's actually a better starting point. If it takes you three days to start your writing your first post, you'll be able to get it down to two. You'll be able to get it down to one. You'll be able to get it down to a few hours to where you're able to put these out and it'll be higher quality than the one that took you three days and it'll come out faster. How do you get there? You do it over and over and over. 
You build the skill. How do great baseball batters become great at batting? They spend an amazing time in the batter's box, whether it's with a pitching machine, with pitchers, with whatever. They spend years grinding it out, fouling balls off, striking out, and they keep showing up. That really is a good analogy here. So 80% are the best review, okay? Best pairing knife for apples or whatever you're finding. Then the other 20, 10 to 20%, need to be how to articles. So in the same knife world, um, how to properly cut an onion, you ever try to cut an onion, they're a little awkward, right? Do you cut it like this way or this way? And then then do you slice it? And then how how do you get the dicing down? Okay, so there's the how to side, which is going to be about 20% of your content. And these should be really helpful posts, again, focused on things that you have data that says people search, okay, and then you just write them. And when they start to work together, if you've got a post that's how to slice an apple, and then you've got a best pairing knife for apples, you link your how to slice an apple, but you link them together. You just put a link in there and you build a little web of relevance on your website. And that's how you're going to grow. So 30 posts, 80 to 90% are direct reviews, 10 to 20% are how to. At that point, high five, you made it through phase number one. And this is amazing. Where you're getting close to is the chasm of death that takes out more entrepreneurs than anything I've seen. But once you get to the point that you've written 30 posts, you want to go back into search console. That's google.com slash webmasters. I showed it before you tied your sitemap in and you want to look, am I getting impressions? Okay. So Google analytics will show you the traffic that you're receiving. Now, remember, note, I didn't say social media. I didn't say go to Instagram. I didn't say go promote it here. Don't go do this, that, the other. Don't put it in Facebook group. Nothing. All you're doing is writing content. I didn't do anything on my channel for over a year. I didn't post on, I didn't post my videos on social media. I ignored everything. I went all in because I was learning how to YouTube. I was learning how to make videos. I was learning how to communicate. I was learning how to upload and publish and all that mess. You need to go all in on that first thing first, which right now is writing on your blog. Um, so then after 30 days after, or 30 posts, if you can do it in 30 days, great. If it takes you 90 days, who cares? That's awesome too. Uh, then go back into search console and, and look at search console and see if you're getting impressions. And if you are circle back to those posts, reread those posts. Are they good? Uh, cause by the time you're writing post 31, you're going to be a lot better than when you were writing post number one. Okay. So you can check search console earlier. Uh, my team and I check it mm, probably twice a week, to be honest with you at this point in time. And there's a point after the next block of 30, I, I recommend you go look in there every single week. If you want to look every week, that's great. So what you're looking for are posts that show up in search console that start to get impressions, but they have very low or no clicks. And what this means is your title is probably missing. And in the video I reference on how to write great content for affiliate posts, how to write great affiliate review, I talk a lot about the title and how to get the title and how to get the hook and the idea of the title by using search intent. Um, I have a video on that, just youtube.com, milesbeckler, comma, search intent, uh, because that's really the key. Because what impressions with no clicks means is that you're showing up when users are searching, but they're choosing the people around you. And if Google, Google's like rating your website. And how does Google rate your website? Well, if Google shows you and no one clicks on you, that's a thumbs down from Google. If Google shows you and people click on you, that's a thumbs up from Google. That's called your click-through rate. So when you see a lot of impressions and no clicks, that's a bad thing. And if you get too many downvotes, meaning people look at you and they just don't click on you, Google's going to remove you from that top search result. So that's why you want to catch posts that start to show up inside of the uh, impressions column and you want to improve them. You want to really kind of make sure they're readable. They're good for the users. The users aren't clicking and, and hitting the back button right away because it's terrible content because that's a vote down from Google. Um, so that's the, the thought process on it. So you got 30 posts going at this point. You're on the path. It's getting easier. Now you need to do another 30 posts. And these next 30 posts, you want to start to get into the world of search engine optimization. You want to really start to use the headings, the H2s, the H3s. You want to find the right word counts. You really want to start to get a little bit more data driven about the content that you're creating, because ultimately this is going to make your content that much more enticing to Google for Google to start displaying you more. The first phase of writing your first 30, I just want you to go through the motions, just become a writer, just get it out, get it flowing. We're going to loop back to those in the future. Your second Second block of 30, we want these to be better. We want these to be noticeably better in the content you're writing and in their optimizations. How do you learn the basics of optimization and SEO? We're going to go back to YouTube here. So Miles Beckler SEO is probably the best place to start. This free SEO class right here is going to explain in a very similar deep dive way that I did here, the, the main ideas about how to structure content 
on your WordPress blog that's going to be really, really, really Google friendly. It's gonna be search engine optimized once you go through this process, okay? And you're gonna understand how all those components work. The other thing you need to figure out is how long should your blog post be? And you type in Miles Beckler, how long should your blog post be? And here it is, there's a video on it. How long should your blog post be? Uh, this process forces Google to show you how many words you need. If you're extra ambitious and you're all in, go through these two videos next and then get started on your content and start from day one with all these bits and pieces involved. If you're busy, if you have kids, if you're working from home, if your life is crazy right now and you're like, dude, I got like this much bandwidth, I've got this much time, I've got this much mental energy to dedicate, ignore this stuff until the process of writing gets easier. Because again, it'll take you three days in the beginning. I'm gonna go full screen here because this is important. Again, it starts three days to write a post in the beginning and then it gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And what we wanna do is we want to, you're building muscle memory Okay, you're, you're, it's getting easier because you don't have to think about all of the little components it becomes second nature. Then you add on more things that are going to help your content go more quickly. Uh, the challenge and the reason I don't recommend you go do all of these things before you get started is because that's going to overwhelm most people. But if you get a little bit of momentum on your blog, you're putting out content, you got your mom blog, you're talking about this, you're talking about that, you're enjoying the process of writing, you're getting comfortable with the process, might even be enjoyable, you might just be getting comfortable with the process of writing. Once that becomes kind of sort of second nature, add on the next level of complexity, which is search engine optimization and the right word count on your posts. And that's how you're going to grow effectively in a way that's going to avoid burnout, which is the number one failure. So now you're working on your second block of 30 posts. Now, again, this might take you another 90 days. You might be six months into it and have 60 posts. I would like for you to be going faster than that. But again, you have constraints in your life that I honor and I understand. We did about um, yeah, actually that was right about where we were. We were doing three posts per week, very three to four posts per week, very consistently on it. So, um, th that's an aggressive, aggressive pace. And the more you post, the better your posts are, the more often you work on it, the faster you're going to grow, the faster you're going to catch up to and overtake your competition. That's the core idea. So your second block of 30 is going, and this block of 30, you are currently trying to cross the chasm of death. What is the chasm of death? So there is an initial momentum. You're, you're watching this video. I hope you're fired up. I hope you're like, ah, it finally makes sense. And it feels believable and it feels doable. And you're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to wake up early every day. I'm going to set my alarm for 4.30 in the morning. And from 4.30 till 7.30, when I used to be sleeping, I'm going to grind on my business and I'm going to get it done. That's what I did because I wanted it that bad. And then when I got home from work, I grinded on it. And then during my lunch breaks, I grinded on it. And then my weekends, I just did nothing but work on this business. And I built a multi-million dollar business with a hundred dollar investment. I know this stuff works. So you're going to commit to it. But when you get two months, three months, four months in, you start to lose connection with that motivation. You start to lose connection with that fired up, like, bro, we can do this. Yeah. It just gets hard. Um, you're not seeing much in the results on search console. You're not seeing any traffic yet at this point. You're definitely not seeing any income from your website yet at this point. And it just gets to the point where you're like, man, does this work? And that's the chasm of death. That's the moment doubt can creep in. And that's the moment you're like, ah, well, maybe there's a shortcut. That's, that's, this is the beginning of the end when people get to this point. Cause that's when they start like, oh, you know, this, this good, I keep seeing this ad about drop shipping on Instagram. Good Lord. Uninstall Instagram from your phone during this process, uninstall Facebook from your phone, just disappear from the world and produce content and, and learn and master these skills. Because when doubt creeps in, when you're like, okay, man, is this really going to work? I don't know. Like, I don't think this is going to work. Then doubt is there. And what happens is the fake gurus play on this doubt. Their ads will speak to this doubt. Their copywriting, their webinars, their sales letters, and their video sales letters are so psychologically persuasive. I mean, it's flat out dangerous. And some of them, most of them are unethical. I would literally say they're borderline unethical and they need you to doubt what you're doing. And then they insert that seed of like, well, if you're not doing this then you're never going to make it because this is what worked for me. And they need you to stop working on your plan to buy their thing because they just bought a house for cash, which is the worst idea in the world. And they have a Lambo oil change that they have to do. They time the absolute top of the real estate market and they got some big time expenses 
even if they paid cash on their house, then $2 million house has a lot of upkeep, like 1% upkeep per year. That's a big freaking number. They have to keep making money to make money. They need to distract you from your plan, convince you and persuade you that their plan is going to get you where you want to go faster, easier, et cetera, which it won't. And then they have to sell you a $2,000 or a $1,000 thing. This is the chasm of death. So many entrepreneurs die and never make it out of the entrepreneurial world because of this. Those who are able to put on their blinders, I am going to be the most helpful person in the world of gardening forever. I'm doing my work. I'm doing my work. I'm doing my work. Those who are able to build the praise for self, the pride in, I published another post today. There's number 48. I'm on it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to hit a hundred posts. I'm going to hit 200 posts. I'm going to be the most helpful gardening blogger in the world. I'm going to be the most helpful blank in the world. And those are the people who succeed because they are able to be driven by kind of a greater mission and they block out all the doubt and the noise because that's what will happen to you months three through month six. What happens around month six is really exciting because that's when the traffic starts to come in. That's when the impressions are now turning into clicks and the clicks turn into traffic and the traffic clicks over to Amazon and that's when things start to get exciting. So you're going to see impressions in search console first. Then you'll start to see traffic in analytics. Then in your Amazon dashboard, you'll start to see clicks over into Amazon and then you see sales and it just takes months to get there. If you're only publishing one post per week, it could take you a year or more to get to that point. It takes 60 plus posts to get to that point. Okay. Um, there's just no way around it. It just takes time. Google doesn't trust you. Your readers don't trust you. Your content isn't all that good. It's definitely not that well optimized. That's where we all start. And you got to start there and you got to persevere through the challenges, just blinders on all in for your audience. And you got to go and make it through that chasm of despair. Cause once your first sale hits, my first sale was a dollar. I think my first month, like month four, um, I got like a dollar 50 and I was like, Oh, I could almost buy a cup of coffee. Right. And, and there were people who were kind of like talking smack about that on my channel. And I, I'm just like, they don't get it. Right. Like that's a big freaking deal to make your first dollar online. Cause for my website, it went, $1 online, then it went 450 and then it went 80 and then it went like 500 and then it went 2000 and now it's at like 3,400 and it just compounded because we have just been adding fuel to the engine relentlessly, regardless of what's going on around us. Okay. I, I digress from this. So we are now at post 60. You have completed your second block of 30 posts. At this point, you're going into search console every seven days. You're looking for posts that are getting impressions and, or are getting clicks or not. If they're not getting clicks, you're looking at the title tag. You're optimizing the title in the description because that's the problem. If they are getting clicks and you can see that you're getting traffic, they would also show up inside of, um, Google analytics. If you're getting traffic to specific posts, you need to go back and look at them. How good were they? Was this post number four and it's actually really bad? It's okay. I read content on my blog from time to time and I'm like, oh, it's a little embarrassing. It's kind of cringeworthy. We all start somewhere. Go watch my first videos if you need to. Don't watch my first videos. That would be a distraction from doing this. Do this. Ignore it. Trust that everybody starts as a rookie. Everybody starts with average at best content. Maybe I started with rubbish content and you can go back and improve it. And that's phase three. So now that you completed 60, you're looking for the spikes in the data. You're looking for the impressions. You're looking for the clicks. When you see that you go back to those posts, but now for month for, for content pieces 61 through 90, you want to go back to your original content that you first wrote on those first topics because you're only writing one post per topic. So you loop back to your old content and you start reading through your first posts, specifically the ones that you're like, that's a really good product. That's a really good. I really like that. Hmm, why did that one not work? Yeah, it's because the content just wasn't there. Go rewrite it, go update it, make it better. Follow the SEO stuff you learned in your second 60 or your second block, your second block of 30, follow that. And now go integrate, implement, make it better. Change the publish date to yesterday's publish date and republish it. It'll go to the top of your uh, blog roll. It'll go to the top of your uh, sitemap and it'll re notify Google that, Hey, this one has been updated at this point in time. So now you're going back through and you're improving your old content. You might want to incorporate and write some new content as well. So your, your third block of 30 
could be a blend of improving old content and writing new content. If your old content was just rubbish and you want to just go and rewrite all 30 of them, I totally get it. You can do that as well. And that really is the game. And this point, when you're working on your post number 61 through 90, and a part of that is reworking your old stuff that should be good. There's a good product. It's a really good thing. It's a really good idea. Huh? Why did that not click? And you're improving those. This is when you start to get into momentum. And this is when you're out of the chasm of death because the impressions are starting to stack up. Your graphs starting to go up in the correct direction. The traffic's starting to show up. You're getting clicks over to Amazon and you should be able to start to expect to see your first sales sometime in this range. It might take you to 120 posts to get those first sales. It doesn't actually matter. What matters is continuing to feed the engine with fuel until it works. And those are the kinds of people who succeed with affiliate marketing is those who are willing to commit. They commit at all costs. I don't give a F I'm doing this. I don't care if my friends get it. I don't care if my family gets it. I'm tuning everybody out. I'm deleting every app. I'm unsubscribing from every fake guru. I'm never watching a webinar again because I got shit to do. And that shit I got to do is write more posts focused on specific topics that people are looking for. I got to make the best post on whatever that thing is that I'm doing. And then I got to do it again and again, because my audience is searching for things. And if your audience who's searching for the best, this, the best, that, if they aren't finding you, they're finding your competitors. There's work to be done. And that's how you make the money online. So really at this point, We've done three blocks of 30 posts, okay? The third block, we're now looping back through and fixing our old stuff that was terrible. We're adding on new great stuff. By the end of this 30, 30 block, you should have 90 posts that you're stoked on, that you're actually proud of. Your WordPress skills should be dialed. The process of getting images and putting it together and making it work is relatively simple. It's second nature. You have new habits installed. You are a more valuable person. Whether your website is actually making you money at this point in time or not is irrelevant. When you have these skills of keyword research, of, of WordPress blog creation, you could at this point go add value to just about any major company in the world, small business, medium-sized business in the world because everyone needs content marketing. That's some powerful value. When my wife and I were going, building our site and her start, site started to get to 60,000 visits per month, I started posting about it like, hey, our site's up to 60,000 visits per month and showing some graphs. And I started attracting client work that was willing to pay me two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000 per month because of the success we were getting over there. It's really powerful to become a more valuable human being. And I think today, more so than ever, boy, we need to be skilling up our value so we stay relevant and we stay valued by the corporations because unemployment is going absolutely crazy. And people don't let go of those valuable employees who are the linchpins within the company, who are more, who bring more value into the company than they cost. Those are the people who stick around. So that's kind of like a, a caveat here. Um, you've got the 90 post done and now it's time to start thinking about distributing and syndicating your content. This is really the last phase. And we've waited until now because A, I can't let you get distracted. There's no posting this stuff on Facebook or did it. It doesn't matter. Ignore it. You're all in on written content that Google's going to love and you go from there. But once you get through the 90 pieces of content, now is when you can start to think, okay, where are my audience members hanging out? And how do I go get my content in front of them where they already are? So Reddit, there's subreddits for people where they hang out. Okay. There's a uh, Quora, which is a question and answer website, uh, old school forums, people hang out and talk in forums all day, every day. Um, YouTube, you could start a podcast on this stuff. It's time now to add on that next layer of skill to help you bring attention to your content. Because what you've built is you've built a little island, okay? Your island of content. Now you need to make sure that people over on Reddit who are interested in permaculture gardening and you've got the Adventures in Permaculture blog or whatever it is, you need to make sure they know about you and your really relevant stuff by essentially sharing really good, helpful posts as answers to people's questions. You never go in and spam these types of communities. You simply want, when somebody's asking like, how do I do an Oogle culture bed? And you're like, oh man, you, you gotta check out my Oogle culture post. I talk about the three different ways you can build an Oogle culture. And the second one only takes 20 minutes to build. And they're like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's the kind of interaction that's required. We don't go into these third party places and say, look at my new post, it's so awesome. Uh, everybody hates that. So um, 
There's, there's Quora, YouTube, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Reddit, forums, et cetera. You don't do them all. You figure out where your people are. Business to business people hang out on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of mums, a lot of home repair, a lot of uh, home improvement in cooking. That's on Pinterest, okay? Figure out where they are and don't do Instagram. Don't do Facebook. It's just not worth it. Uh, Zuckerberg does not want to give you reach, so don't give him content. Then the last step. And the last step is another block of 30 posts forever. And that's truly the game. And today my wife's website has literally connected with over 40 million people, most of whom came directly from Google. And it's because she has over a thousand posts on her website, uh, the milesbeckler.com website. Um, my highest month was like right around a hundred thousand visits within a month. Um, currently I think I'm getting like 80,000 ish visits per month to my blog. And that's because I posted about 380, 390 incredibly well-written detailed blog posts, the miles Beckler YouTube channel reaches hundreds of thousands of people per month. I have 130 ish thousand subscribers. Um, the reason is because I put out 600 and something videos and I'm still showing up my affiliate niche site that grew. It, we're still putting a bunch of content out. We're still getting more traffic. Our income is going up every single day right now because our traffic is going up every single day right now because we're relentlessly putting out more helpful content for them. Those who literally embody this, this state of being that is I'm a creator and I create the most helpful stuff for my people. And I am all in on you. And that is the truth. And I hope you've been able to feel it. And I hope you've been able to understand that like, I really am here for you. Like there's no sales pitch. I'm not like, Oh, if I make this video on a then I could sell them this and then I could make some, it doesn't work that way. And if you're trying to sell people on stuff, if you're like, man, I need to get money. I need, no, you don't, you need to give value. And when that clicks and when you get really good at that and you really are and you become one of the most helpful people to your audience the money just shows up hand over fist it absolutely shows up it works it works every single time you have to protect yourself from overwhelm if you try to do too much too early because i, I covered the whole path and you're like i can do it all odds are you can't you're not superhuman and most every person who tries to do all of it at once burns out and that's a game ender for most people. You got to be able to stick with it for the long run in order to get the compounding results here. That's the biggest key. And then you got to keep yourself motivated from months three through months six in that chasm of death, because that's when doubt can creep in. That's when people go do other things. That's when people jump to the shiny objects. That's when people land on other people's webinars, hearing all this psychologically persuasive, this psychological warfare that's trying to separate you from your hard earned money. I don't need your money because I have four websites generating over $10,000 a month. And my newest website that's 10 months old is already just about to get to $4,000 per month. I didn't show any ads during this, before this, after this, because I don't need your money. This is what truly successful and wealthy people do is they give value to others because I want to see you succeed. I want to see you create more revenue and a more enjoyable lifestyle for you and your family. So you can become a beacon of light in your community. So you can donate to your local charity. So you can donate to your church. So you can donate your time and food to the food bank, whatever you want to do. I want to empower you to do that. And you can do that when you help your audience get what they're searching for. And our world will just become a better place when everyone tunes in with this. And there's a lot of shady shysters out there who are just trying to separate you from your money because they bought too big of a house because they bought the stupid Lambo that has $4,000 oil changes because they bought too many liabilities and they ain't got no assets. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can grow an asset for less than $40. And we just mapped out the whole plan here. It's the same plan that we grew $95 and 40 cents. 10 years ago, we brought in millions of dollars from that website. It's friggin' real. I just want to F bomb this. I'm so like, I know you can do it, but I got to get off the horse. We have been here for a damn long time. I appreciate you. If you made it to the end, you have to let me know in the bottom that you made it to the end. I don't care how you do that. Just like, damn good on you. Uh, what are we even at? I think we crossed an hour. We're rocking and rolling here. I thank you so much for doing what you do. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, because I'm going to do a video soon that I'm going to like review a bunch of successful affiliate websites. Um, so if you want to get notified when that video comes out, uh, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell. You'll get a notification when that comes out. And I just thank you. I hope, I hope you stick with it. I hope you follow through, uh, be 
cautious of how much you try to do, how many learning curves you take on at one time, break it up in the way that I explained it in this video is going to really help you rewatch the video. If you have to really nail down your nine, 30, 60, 90 day plan for success, write it out. It's all here. I didn't hide anything from you. There's nothing hidden here. The hidden thing is you digging in doing the, and work for long enough to get to where you want to be. So get what you got to get going, going. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Why am I still talking? I don't know. Thank you. Be well. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.